fellow friends around the world. My name is Kazu. I welcome you all to come and visit my page. And I hope you enjoy all my posts, pictures, and video clips. I want to use this wonderful opportunity to say thank you all who have been leaving your wonderful comments, messages, and gifts. And I hope I will hear from you again. I also want to say thank you for choosing to view this video clip. What we need to understand is that we as Americans, we've got a great heritage in our Constitution and Bill of Rights that doesn't exist in many parts of the world. And it is, I think, important for all of us to know, as citizens of the world, that other people who lack any national institutions to protect their rights have got a system going under the international system. Through the United Nations, which started a long time ago, 1945, there was a great change that took place about the rights of the individual. Instead of having to be silent in the face of oppression, the UN Charter and then the Universal Declaration of Human Rights brought each person into a position where he or she could make a complaint if the rights of that person were being violated. That was never true before. It came about when the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was created, and then following that, a whole system of international treaties. Treaties are international laws, and all countries obey them. And many countries, most countries of the world, have in fact agreed by ratifying these treaties that they will observe, protect, and promote the human rights of the human beings over whom they have dominion. I've done this work in Bosnia after the end of the Balkans war there because Bosnia was having to find a new government and the basis of the new government, the central core of it, was human rights. When there was any dispute in any uh, issue in Bosnia involving rights, human rights took precedence over every other kind of entitlement that Bosnians had. In Indonesia, where I was teaching human rights to university students, there the problems were different. The students in the Asia-Pacific region had the very strong belief that the idea of human rights came from the West and that those of us who live in the West use human rights as a means of achieving our economic and political dominance over others. Well, what I tried to tell them and what I'm telling you now is that in the written word that is not true. Human rights treats all nations, all people exactly the same on paper. When it comes into practice, governments, corporations, um, various uh, govern people who govern who are seeking their own political advancement, they take this human right and distort it and make it uh, something that's useful for their own purposes. But that's not human rights. Human rights at the bottom is a fair, even-handed, objective system that seeks to assure that everyone on this planet is treated the same. So what I would like to see as we go along on this earth, if we can take care of it and take care of our environment a little bit better, we can take care of protecting people a whole lot more than we do now. We're not doing enough. Why then, at the end of a period of five or ten years, there would be a greater number of people on this planet who would be able to stand up and say, I have a right to be here. It, I don't have to be wealthy. I don't have to be of a certain nationality. I don't have to speak a certain language. I don't have to have a particular religious belief. I have these rights because I'm a human being, and that's good enough. And if we can have more of that on this planet in 10 years, I think I would be very happy. And I'm here in San Francisco attending the Global Futures Assembly on behalf of my brother, Dr. Rashmi Mayur, who played a major role envisioning 
the future of this planet and he always wanted it to be beautiful and nice for the future children and i am going to attend and take this honor on his behalf my idea about the future is the place where i'm sitting just now you can see that there are beautiful flowers i'm enjoying nature and that is where we have come from and that is what we should always enjoy to keep our peace of mind and our sanity if we bring all the concrete jungle all the computers and do not keep in touch with our people physically then we will lose touch and it is not good for the health of individuals and of this planet so my peace of mind or the future peace of mind and the beauty of the planet is what will bring the beauty of everybody the nature the people and all and that is what i envision for the future well i have been a incorrigible optimistic see i hope you see that the things would move in positive direction and since i am a gandhian i firmly believe that the gandhian principle gandhi's principle of truth peace and non violence will help in bringing peace on earth and resolving this is the conflict of any type see and the world is very fast moving towards this gandhian philosophy because his philosophy is the only solution that people have started finding see and the peace would certainly come on the earth and then i have also a gandhi vision of one world and world government he has said that the fraternity brotherhood which he would come when there would be one world and that one world will be governed you see by world government see all the member joining this world government would you see feel a feeling of fraternity and also accepting the laws for implementation that was the vision he had and i strongly believe it is and toward the evening of my life you see i have determined myself to spread gandhi's message all over the world and precisely for that purpose this gandhian forum for world peace has been constituted i am trying to get to see as many people as possible to join this world peace forum and then what a plan of action which could be implemented in the countries from where you see the people join us another thing the recent developments in the united nations you see have i have made me feel that the united nations may be restructured and i have given in my speech you see the the ray of hope that i find in the decisions being taken by dr kofi annan see in the recent past see. i had i had earlier you see a different view i thought that united nation is going to be a defunct organization but with this recent development i find that the united nation can be restructured and the world power the permanent members of the security council may be motivated you see to forgo their veto power and once they agree to remove the veto power all the member countries in the united nations will have equal status and equal powers and that will make the world of difference and there i have hope and so i have been i have started lobbying for restructuring of the united nations and join hands with dr ceo green when well, that is that is the thing but my main concern even with the united nations is that the gandhian principle should be adopted and followed you see as rapidly and as costly as possible you see to save the world from the coming catastrophe